and all couple of uh, uh, terminologies need to be comfortable with one is the day count conventions see this these all will come into picture especially when i am doing a sell off of my bonds in the middle i have purchased a bond i want to sell it off probably in the middle before the maturity period there are a lot of bonds that are traded also we have seen uh, in the list so i want to sell off the bond somewhere in the middle if i have to sell off the bond let's say the bond is purchased on 1st jan the coupon is being paid on 1st july right and i am thinking of selling off the bond on 1st uh, september i want to sell off so the next uh, coupon will be paid on 1st jan this is the flow now i am thinking of selling off the bond on 1st september itself now the logic is if i sell off on 1st september the other party who has purchased it he will receive the coupon the next coupon the coupon that is going to be declared on 1st jan he would be the recipient of that i would not be the recipient right but if you look at it in slightly more detail for this 4 months of holding he is receiving the entire coupon whatever is getting declared but the 2 months of holding here i am not receiving any coupon here because coupon is a is a is an amount that goes to the owner and directly he is the owner the new guy is the owner so he will receive the entire coupon so what we are simply saying is if at all i have to sell off the bond today i should add up this interest also for this two period whatever i am supposed to receive as an interest for this two month period i should add it up put it as a part of the selling price if see that's the only way i will get the coupon worth of this two because once the once the other party is purchasing the bond he will receive the entire coupon but logically speaking i should receive the half of the coupon or at least two months worth of the coupon because i have held it for that many months or assume that you have sold it on 15th december even then also the other party only will receive the coupon just by holding it for 15 days he should not be eligible to receive the entire coupon so that is where what we are saying is you will try to find out the interest which is accumulated between the last coupon payment date and the settlement date today we are settling it off so if i am trying to find out the coupon between the last settlement last coupon date if i am trying to find out that worth of the coupon between the last coupon date and the date on which i am selling off the bond because that much of coupon should come to me that is what we are calling as accrued interest the interest uh, which which uh, got accrued but not at paid it will be paid only on first jan but i am disposing it out before first jan so that portion of the interest which was not paid but it came up is what we are calling as accrued interest and simply what we are saying is whatever is that accrued interest there are different ways of computing the accrued interest using the various day count convention logically speaking what is that uh, we have to put number of days see when i say probably if i am saying i am here i am saying two months two months is what i have accumulated out of the six months so i may say the accrued interest is simply if if the interest is 6 dollars if the coupon is 6 dollars then probably i am saying 6 into 2 by 6 which is 2 dollars belong to me so what are we saying in computation of the accrued interest number of days from the last coupon payment date to the total number of days between the two coupon payment dates that is what is the time period 
that I would be entitled to receive. Now, that numerator and denominator, number of days from the last coupon to settlement, divided by the number of days between two coupons. Different instruments compute those two things in different, that computation of the number of days is done differently by different instruments. The three different ways that are available in the market are actual to actual, actual by actual. Which means uh, even, so let's say, if you are simple logics, last coupon date 1st July, right, I will take just a quick example, last uh, coupon date is 1st uh, July, we are selling it off uh, on uh, 1st September, the next coupon date is 1st Jan. Right? If I am going by actual by actual mechanism. So, numerator, which is the difference between these two, is in actual number of days. The denominator, which is the difference between these two, is also in actual number of days. So, what is my number of days here? Probably this minus this is the actual number of days of the numerator and this minus this is the actual number of days of the denominator some 0.336 whatever is the coupon into 0.3369 belongs to me because actual number of days between the settlement period and the last coupon payment date divided by the actual number of days between the two coupon payment dates that is what is the percentage of amount that gets as accrued interest for the person who is settling it off in the middle. The second convention, this is what is the computation that is typically applicable with treasury bonds. Now, the other convention that is uh, present is a 30 by 360 convention, which is for a municipal bonds and corporate bonds. What are we saying in that case? Find out the completed months. So, every first is one month, irrespective of 30 days, 31 days, whatever it is. Every first or every same date is a one month. So, because you have taken the first July, first August is one month. It's like 30 days. Whether it is 31 or 29, it doesn't matter. It's one month. It's taken as 30 days. One completed month is taken as 30 days. So, first July when you are starting, first August is some 30 days. First September is another 30. So, 60. So, your settlement is happening in 60 days. So, it is taken in terms of month and part of it. So, it simply in that convention it goes as 60 by 180. Because the first Jan is taken as 6 months. The first is 30 days. Any same date repeating, it is taken as 30 days. So, probably if it had settled on 3rd September, Instead of 1st September, you would take it as 62 days. 60 days up to 1st September, we won't count how many exact days. One same date repeating is 30 days over. Another time it repeats, another 30 days over. Apart from that, any excess comes, you just add up those days. So, here we are saying in this convention, I will get only 0 0.3331. Whereas, the third convention is actual by 360. So, denominator is computed in terms of months. So, in this case, my denominator is 180 only. But the numerator is actuals. Numerator is actuals, which is the difference between these two, divided by denominator, which is 180. So, this comes out as 0 0.344. So, these are the three conventions that are available. To compute your accrued interest. So, different kinds of instruments, they use different formulas. So, basically the treasury bonds use actual by